everyone, Kelly here. And today I wanted to share with you my fall book haul. And these will include the books that you all voted for. A couple months ago, I did a video where I talked about all the top books on my wish list, and I had you all vote for which ones I should buy since I had some extra fun money. And the great thing is that I had waited like till the turn of the month before I bought them. And so I got more money put into my fun money. So I was actually able to buy quite a lot of the books that you all voted for. So I'm really excited to show which ones got the top votes and so on, which ones I ended up purchasing. But first of all, before I show you the books, if you have been here with me for a while, you know that anytime I haul any books, I always donate a dollar per book towards a charity. And I usually try to pick one involving literacy. literacy. The past few I have done like COVID related charities, but this time I wanted to get back to doing literacy based charities. So I picked a, a charity called Pro Literacy. I have donated to them in the past. They are a organization that provides resources for adults to learn how to read and to promote adult literacy. And they sent an email to me over the summer talking about the effects that COVID has had on adult literacy. And it totally makes sense how it would have a negative impact because a lot of public libraries are closed and community organizations that might have provided literacy programs for adults. And so therefore, um, they're struggling quite a bit getting the resources out there. And so they are starting to create some more free apps and online resources to help adults with literacy. And so I really want to help promote that program because I think it is really important thing. And, you know, I feel like the public libraries could be closed for a long time and some of those organizations will have to be closed for a while. So I want to be able to support that organization. I'll link them down below if you want to check out in case you want to do a donation at some point. So yes, yeah, so I'm going to be donating a dollar for everything in this hall towards that organization. I usually round up as well. So let's start first with the books that you all voted on. So I had kind of two categories of books. There's one that got like a lot of votes and then there was some that got um, maybe only like two or three votes, but they were higher than, there were some books that only, like there were several books that only got one vote. So they were higher than one, but they weren't like in the top. So in the top of the ones that you guys voted for, there are three books that all kind of tied as the top votes. And some of these are not surprising. Like the first one was Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow um, by Jessica Townsend. And so many people in the comments said how much they loved this book. It's a middle grade fantasy. And I'm really excited to have gotten this now. I was waiting to start this series because I usually don't like to read a series that only has one book out. So now we're at the point where I believe three books are out in the series. So I think that's a perfect time to start it. So I won't be like waiting as long for the series to go on and I'll be able to like binge read those three books if I really wanted to. So I'm really excited that you guys voted for that one. And the next one was also middle grade. I think middle grades can just be pretty popular and that is The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. I think this might be a duology or a trilogy. So if I like this one, I'll get the next one. I've heard that people say that they have read this with their kids. So I might actually read this with my five-year-old because yeah, it's got a lot of, um, of course, now I'm not seeing the pic. There you go. So there was a lot of like big pictures in there. So I think this will be a great one to read with my five-year-old. This is a middle grade fantasy again about a robot that is stranded on a deserted island. And I've heard it's really cute. And a lot of you said in the comments that you love that one, especially to read with your kids. And the third one is an adult book. And it was the adult book with the most votes. And I was kind of surprised about this one. This is Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Sinter. I don't know why I was surprised this one got the most of votes of the adult books, but I was. This is a contemporary, I think it's kind of more like women's fiction or focused on a um, romance in some parts of it. But um, it is about a woman firefighter who moves to a new town. And I think her new fire station is all men and kind of has that like old boys club kind of feel. And so it's her trying to get into the group at the fire station. But then I also think she has a romance as well. So those three were kind of in the top tier of votes. And the next section, all these other ones were ones that maybe only got a few votes, but they got more than one. So I went ahead and got them because I had that extra fun money. So I just thought I'll just buy some more that you guys voted for. And almost all of these um, people 
made specific comments of how interesting they sounded or that they enjoyed reading them. So I'm really excited about every single one of these. And that's the great thing about having you guys vote is that it got me more excited to read these books because sometimes I buy a book and it sits on my shelf for a while. So these are all ones that I'm like really interested in reading sooner because you guys got me excited about them. So the first one in this group was Soulless by Gail Carriger, and a lot of people said they just thought this was a really fun series. And this is, I believe, like a historical, supernatural, paranormal kind of story, a series. Um, I So I think there's like, you know, vampires and werewolves and stuff, but it takes place in Victorian times. And so I think this will just be like a fun read. And then next I have a couple nonfiction that you all were interested in. This one is Mighty Be Our Powers, How Sisterhood, Prayer, and Sex Changed a Nation at War by Lehman Gabawi. So this is about a group of women during the Liberian Civil War and they banded together and I believe they held protests and things like that. So it was in 2003 and they formed the Liberian Mass Action for Peace, which is a coalition of both Christian and Muslim women that did public protest um, and even held a sex strike. So I just think this will be a very interesting book to read. I'm kind of hoping to read this for nonfiction November because it just sounds so interesting. And then this next nonfiction, I've heard several people lately on booktube actually reviewing this. So I'm really interested in reading it. And this is The Girl with Seven Names, Escape from North Korea by Yonsei Lee. And this is just her memoir about how she escaped from North Korea. I believe she was younger. Yeah, she was a child um, and at 17 she escaped. And so just her experiences in North Korea and then how she ended up leaving and her life after, I believe. And I've just heard really great things about this memoir. So I'm excited to read that one. And then I have a couple kind of more um, dystopian or fantasy kind of things. This first one is called Moon of the Crusted Snow by Wabisha Rice. And I think this is a apocalyptic book. Like I think it's actually taking place during like the apocalypse, like something has happened to destroy modern civilization. And this small community is doing okay for themselves, like getting by. And then people outside the community see that they're doing well. And I think are trying to get into the community to survive. Um, and so this is a pretty short book, but I've heard really good things about it. So I'm excited to read that one. And the other one is one that is, I'm super excited about, especially lately, because I've read one of her books, and that is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This is the first book in the Broken Earth trilogy. I've heard so many people talk about this. This is kind of like sci-fi fantasy, post-apocalyptic, all in one. And I think it's like taking place after the Earth has been destroyed. Um, and, or I don't even know if it's actually like our Earth, but like whatever <laughs> Earth this is. And the reason I'm so excited about this is that I've been reading a short story collection from N.K. Jemisin, and I just think she's a phenomenal writer. I hadn't read any of her books before. I started that short fiction um, collection, and I'm just like blown away, and I'm not even a short story person. So if she can blow me away with these short stories, I'm like super excited to start the series, and I've just heard so many good things about this one. So I'm glad you all voted for it. And then I have a contemporary and that is Americana by Chimamanda Ngochi Adichie and I'm really excited about this wing one because I have enjoyed the nonfiction I have read from her um, and I've wanted to read one of her novels so I put this one on there because I think out of all of her novels this is the one I'm most interested in and I think this um, takes place pretty soon after 9-11 and there is a couple who are leaving Nigeria and one moves to America, but then another one, um, the man ends up having to go to Europe instead and th their time apart. And then I think they reunite maybe. Um, so kind of just, I think this takes place over a long period of time and deals with what they go through as um, refugees and immigrants. And then the last one that you all voted for was The Humans by Matt Haig. And this is a adult sci-fi about an alien who ends up in planet Earth trying to um, stop a discovery from happening and becomes a human and just kind of like, I guess, experiencing what it is like to be a human. And this actually moves me into the books I bought that weren't part of your votes because I really wanted a better cover for this than the cover that kind of is 
easy to get a hold of. I'll show you a picture of what that cover looks like. It's a nose and I just, this is why I haven't bought this book yet because I just don't like this cover and this is the one that's most widely available. And there were covers like this that have this dog on it, but it was hard to get it. And I found that I could have bought the cover with the nose on it for like $13 or something like that. But if I paid $20, I could buy a bundle of Matt Haig's books. And so that's what I did. <laughs> and then I got this cover. So in that bundle, I got two more of his books. And even though I wasn't necessarily planning on buying these, I spent a little more money got three books instead of one and I got the cover I wanted and I'm interested in trying these out this is the Radleys by him and this is another fiction book and I think it's about vampires like a family living in a suburban area and they're a little bit different and I I kind of think they might be vampires is what I've heard I don't know hopefully that's not a spoiler because it doesn't really say that on the back but like I don't think I would know that if it was a spoiler. I don't know. Maybe it says it on the Goodreads or something like that. And then I got one of his nonfictions in that bundle. This is Reasons to Stay Alive. And I believe this is about his um, kind of journey with mental illness. And so I think that would be an interesting one to read. And I think my husband might want to read this as well. So it says back here, it's warm and engaging and shot through with humor. But I've also heard there's some pretty... Um, hard things as well in this memoir. So like I said, that's transitioning into books that I had bought as not part of this vote. Um, most of these I bought before, like earlier and probably more in the summer. I'm just calling this my fall book haul because I'm doing it in the fall, but and telling you about it in the fall. But I probably bought the rest of these or was given these towards the end of summer. So the first one is The Children of Noisy Village by Astrid Lindgren. This is the author that did Pippi Longstocking. And this I just bought because my daughter and I are reading this as part of school. And, and when we study Europe, we're going to be starting this this week. And it's just a short, like, kind of children's um, chapter book. So, you know, very quick. We're just going to be reading it for a couple weeks when we study Europe because this takes place in Sweden, I believe. So um, I got this at Thrift Books for like a dollar. So it was worth it since the library didn't have it. And then the other one I bought for myself, I'd already reviewed on here. And this is A Literary Education, Adapting Charlotte Mason for Modern Secular Homeschooling by Emily Cook. And this was just a book that I read to help me start homeschooling. And I <laughs> really enjoy this book. I ended up getting it five stars. It was very helpful for me as a beginning homeschool parent. Um, yeah, so I would highly recommend this one if anybody is also starting in on their homeschool journey. I think you can get a lot out, out of it even if you've already started homeschooling this year. Um, but if you're new to it and just wanted to learn some other ways of like using literature in your homeschool, I think this one is great. And then the rest of these books actually were given to me by my sister-in-law. She was moving over the summer and wanted to, you know, purge some of her books out of her life. And these are ones she thought I would like. I think all of these are kind of like women's fiction is what I would call them. So they might have a little romance, but then also might just be like slice of life type books. I had never heard of any of these books or their authors. So if you have heard of any of these um, let me know or or if authors or anything. I probably will take some of these and do them in my try a chapter series I'm I've been doing over the last couple months because I just don't even know if I'm gonna like these or not. I think some of these have a little bit of magical type things too, so that'll be fun. This first one is called The Book Charmer by Karen Hawkins, and obviously this one involves books in some form. So I don't know, this one says the main character, Sarah, has grown up to be a librarian in her quaint southern town. And her gift is to place every book in the hands of the perfect reader. So maybe there'll be some kind of like she has some talent of connecting books with people. So that one could be a cute read. The next one is Midnight at the Blackbird Cafe by Heather Weber. And I had read the read what these were about and I completely forgot about it. So sorry that I have to look at the back. This also takes place in the South. Um, in a small town and Anna has returned to her hometown um, to bury her grandmother who was the owner of the Blackbird Cafe. So I'm kind of wondering if this is going to be a second chance romance or just her dealing with grief. I don't know. If you've heard of this one, let me know. 
And the next one is Season, Season of the Dragonflies by Sarah Creech. And this is, sounds like a generational story. The Lenore women have manufactured a fragrance unlike any other. Living in the Blue Ridge Mountains, their perfumery, perfumery guards unique, mysterious ingredients. So I think this will have a little bit of magic in it as well. And the next two are by the same author, The Optimist's Guide to Letting Go by Amy E. Reichert. And um, I read the back of this and I don't really know what this is about even after reading the back. Um, it sounds like a woman that has a controlling mother, but then also has a teenage daughter that she's not getting along with and the things that happen then. I'm assuming that it'll mean that she is going to learn to love life for the way it is. And then the next one is The Simplicity of Cider by that author. Um, and I believe this is about a generational story about a family who has an apple orchard. Yeah, this one does not get good ratings from what I saw online. So I think I'll definitely put this one in a triad chapter. Um, and that'll help me know if I am interested in that author. And then... Those are all the books I bought. Last time I did a book haul or two times ago towards the beginning of COVID, um, I had included my puzzles I purchased and people seem to be interested in seeing them. And so I also did a puzzle purchase. I buy my puzzles from a website called puzzlewarehouse.com. And sometimes they have really good sales because I had made a purchase back in like April or May. I had built up some points. And so I got, I think like, ten dollars or something off of this order based on those points so it was worthwhile to get some more puzzles because i really enjoy doing puzzles while i listen to audiobooks and so i got four i'll just show you real quick so i thought this one was just really pretty and it has fall like co colors so i want to do that one soon and then i become really obsessed with birds during the pandemic because you know when you're at home you can look at, out the window to birds and so i really like cardinals so I got this one with the Cardinals and then I got two that are book like. So maybe you guys would be interested in it. They had several that had books as kind of the point of the puzzle. This is a shaped puzzle. It's hard to see that. Sorry with the glare. Um, so yeah, it's like actually is that shape with the like bouquet of flowers and then the pile of books underneath. So that one will be interesting. I guess on the back, you could see it without the missing pieces it shows in the front. So that's what it's going to look like when I do it. And I've always wanted to do a shaped puzzle. And then the last one is just like kind of fun book covers. So they're not like real book titles. It's like best book I ever read and books that make me look smart. So it's kind of just a row of books. They were on sale. So I got those and I'm excited to listen to some audiobooks while doing those puzzles. So that's it for me. If you want to check out the organization Pro Literacy, I will link them down below. If you want to talk about any of these, if you read them, enjoy them, let me know, especially if you know any of those authors that my sister-in-law gave me because... Yeah, I just don't know anything about, I don't, women's fiction is not like necessarily a genre that I gravitate towards, but every once in a while I find one I really love. So I might as well give them a try since I was given them. And yeah, so I would love to talk to you down below. I'll see you next time. Bye.